Hello, my name is Stuart Wood and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're into photography, particularly macro photography, then click the subscribe button, click the bell icon to get notified when new videos go live. Now, this is the second part of a uh, two-part video series about creating the image called Orb of Life. So what we're going to do now is we've got the images, we've taken them into Lightroom and we are ready to edit them. Let's go over and have a look at them. As with all of the uh, videos that I do, I'm going to select all of my um, pictures. I'm going to flag it as a pick. And on the filter, I'm going to select flagged. And that way we can filter out the ones that we don't want. So these first ones up to here are all the setup. That's when we're setting up the lights and the focusing and that. And we don't need to look at those. They're just for the setup. Okay. Now anything after this, is our orb of life now just here my uh, my flash i said i had the flash set too high so we don't want those we have some blank ones this is where my flash didn't go off because sometimes the um the remote shutter uh, devices don't trigger the flash so we want to get rid of those and what we're left with is just the orb images Okay, now what we need to do here is we need to pick the main image that's going to be our orb. Okay, now I'm not going to deflag any of these because we might come back and use some. But what I want to do is I want to pick one that's really standing out. In nice colours, nice reflections. But we don't need too bright, that's too bright. Oh, well, there's a nice reflection in. I'm thinking that one is nice. The, um, the reflection from our light is very small on some of these. Uh, let me see if I can find one like that. It's very big and you can see that we've used a snoot on that. This one, these ones, they're all very small. But I like the, um, the ref is it the, the refraction I believe it's called that's uh, actually inside of that image. Okay. So with that being done, we've chosen that one. I'm going to pick that as a five star. Okay. And now I want to go through and pick um, four stars. And these are going to be based on the area. Let me just show you this. The area around the orb. Okay. So I'm just going to have a look. That one I like. No, it's backlit. I don't really want it backlit much. Oh, they're saying that there. That one's not that bad. Look at that one. There we go with that one. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily we're going to be using all of these. It's just potential ones that look nice. Don't want that one. Now, I am viewing these on my second monitor for the, uh, the pick because I need to make sure I get the right ones. Okay, so now we've filtered out all the ones that we don't want. We've got the ones that we that have potential to go into our image. What we want to do now is do a basic edit on our five star image. So I'm going to pick the five star image. And we're going to go into uh, the develop module. Okay, now basically ignore this. We're only looking at this area here and the, um, the shadows and that. But what I want to do is I want to bump up the contrast a little bit. Clarity definitely wants to go up, not by much. Vibrance up a little bit. All these macro images are always vibrant. When it comes to these slides, I'm just going to move them back and forward to see what I get. I don't really want that one. I'm going to put the shadows down a bit. I'll leave the, uh, the white. And we'll leave that there. Let's go to the tone curve. So I'm going to uh, compress. I'm going to compress the shadows. I'm then going to introduce a little bit of blue into them. Don't want much. A little bit. I'm really liking the blue in the shadows at the moment. So what we're going to do there and 
detail sharpening and put down 50 the mask I'm holding down the alt key to introduce a mask to the sharpening because we only want the sharpening on the sharp piece of the image so that the blurred parts are all out of focus I'm not going to reduce any of the noise I am going to remove the chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections for that lens coming all the way down here we have a dehaze button let's just have a play with that and see what it does Ooh, don't like that let's turn it on and off and have a look doesn't really do much for this image sometimes it comes in handy now camera calibration we're going to have a play in here and all I'm going to do is just move these colours around see what I like And it, it, it's the best way to learn is if you don't know what something does move the slider back and forth because this isn't work this is playing okay and by moving the sliders backwards and forwards or left and right depending on your perspective uh, you'll get to see what that particular slider does and whether you like the effect or not oh I do like those blues like that look at that let's um Let's put that there. Let's have a look at the greens. I'm not keen on brown, so I'm going to move the, the greens to the left a little bit as well. Okay, so we'll turn that on and off. We'll have a look. So basically what we're doing is we're introducing more blue. I do like my blue. <laughs> okay, in case you hadn't noticed. Well, with that being done, I'm going to make sure that my five star image is selected. I'm going to select the first four by using the shift key and clicking on the end. And I'm going to click on synchronize. I'm then going to do the same for the rest. Just synchronize those. And all of those images are now synchronized with those color edits. So now that we've done that in Lightroom, we need to take this image into Photoshop and we need to start building up our image. I'm going to make sure I've got all of these images selected. I'm going to come up to, I believe it's Photo, Edit In, and we're going to Open as Layers in Photoshop. So now we're in Photoshop, the very first thing I'm going to do is save this file as a PSD file. I'm going to come up to File. Save as. I mean images, and we'll create a PSD folder, and we're going to call this for our life. With a capital O. Thank you very much. We'll click OK, and there we go. So what we need to do now is we need to ID our five-star image, which is that one yep that's him okay so i want to drag that now down to the bottom of my stack because that is going to be our primary image for this shot and then if i did the layer and saved it i'm going to try turning on my rack on tablet and let's uh fingers crossed that it doesn't lock up anyway it seems to be working for now right so what i want to do now is i need to id a, a part of the image that we can use to replace this part here okay let's have a look at this one first and what i like about this um this particular or well, what i don't like i should say Let me just get a uh, soft brush. Good. So what I don't like about this one is that there. I want that. I'm not keen on all of this area here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a solid color below that layer. 
and I'm going to pick out from the corner here, okay? So that gives us a nice, um, a nice blend there. Bring this all the way in. Very, very tight. I'm going to drop my flow as well, so that we're not, we're not impacting it too much. I want to reduce that side because what I want to do is pick one of these others for um, that particular part, which is this one here. I'm just going to bring that down on top. I'm going to put a layer mask in while holding the alt key. If you put a layer, click on the layer mask, it fills it in black for you. And now I'm just going to gently paint. with white built in that layer, okay? Just turn that off. Okay, now what you're seeing, you're seeing some banding on um, on this image that's just the way my monitor is displaying it i don't know if you'll see it on the video but there is some banding and uh, i shouldn't worry about that too much okay so we've got that let's have a look at this image here um i'm going to do the same rolling the ok click on the mask and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try painting in certain areas just to see what happens. I'm going to drop that flow again. And you can see it's slightly out. Can you see there? So I don't want that part. Get rid of that. Get rid of it. However, the part at the front, just here, I do like, and we will keep that. Drop that flow again, just to blend that in a little bit. Bring it back up. And I'm just going to darken this down like that. Let's see what we've got here. Any parts of that we like? So, again, I'm going to put a layer mask on. I'm going to paint in white, just here, just to fill that little bit in just there like that, okay? That looks okay. Let's have a look at this one. Um, don't think I want to use that one, so we'll get rid of it. The ambient ones, I don't think I'm going to need them. I mean, I photographed them just in case we needed them, but looks like we don't need them. This one? Um, nope, don't need that one. Now I kind of like this area just here. I'm making sure I've got a soft brush. I'm just going to bring that in a little bit. You see the difference there that that makes? Now the camera has slightly moved when we've done this. If you look, um, let's have a look here. So we're going to need to just do some fine tuning on this layer. Uh, 
There we go. There we go. That's uh, now in place. Have a look at this one. Mm, do I like that or don't I? That's the question. <laughs> No, I'll leave that one for this one. I don't really want much in the foreground. Okay, now uh, this one has got some nice foreground. What we want to do is let's just pick the brush be really big that don't like this part here so let's get rid of that but it's again it's in focus and I'm going to drop the opacity all the way down as much as possible like about 13 percent you'll hardly see any difference but it can add to the image so that it's not right just you know it's not just black it's just there's, a, there's something there you don't know what it is but your mind clicks and says there is something there uh, let's look at this one I like this area over here so I'm just gonna paint it and see if it fits in quite nicely go and this one again is going to need moving from the look of it. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to want to fit. And this is an effect of the shadows changing. It um, because of the shadows change, it kind of makes it look like the images moved or the cameras moved, but it's actually the shadows. I'm going to reduce the opacity of that layer because I only want it highlighted. There we go. I like the details are there. So let's again put a layer mask on, paint with a brush. There you go. This gives that little subtle effect right at the edge there. Looks like it's quite a line as well, actually. I will leave that as it is. Let's um, spin off those top three layers. That's a nice one. Um, that's not. Get rid of that. I do believe we have our image done. Rather, well, compositing side is done on that image. So now we have the compositing side done, we need to now crop this image. I'm going to grab my crop tool, make sure original ratio is selected. I'm now going to crop this in such a way that the orb is on the ruler first. Um, like that. Get a little bit. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to put all of these into a folder. I'm going to select them all using the shift key. And then drag them over to a folder and we'll call this orb. So I've zoomed into the image now. I'm going to paint around the edge of the orb. I'm going to bring my flow up. So I can see the effect.
Okay, drop the flow again. Add in this area here. See there? I'm just trying to think. Um, I'm going to lower the opacity of this one just so it matches a little bit better to the underlying layer. There we go. That's good. That's good. Do we have some more detail there or not? No, we'll leave that. And there we go. Final step, again like we did on our dandelion clock, is I'm going to bring in some textures now to overlay onto this uh, image. I'm going to come to File, Open, and before I do that actually, let me just save it. I'm going to save that file. Then I'm going to come to File and Open, and I'm going to come to my Products, and we're going to use uh, Creative Textures, Black and White, and again I'm going to use Antique and Autumn. I do like these uh, these textures. I'm going to click and drag, holding the shift key down, and I'm going to move these textures over the top, top of our, um, <laughs> not the top of our orb, not, not in between the layers. Same again, shift, click, drag. Okay, put the pen away. The first one I'm going to use is this one. I do like this texture. Holding the shift key, key down to constrain our proportions. I'm just going to free transform it. Shortcut key for that is control T. Or you can come into edit and free transform. Let's select our overlay to soft light. Let's see what that does for us. I'm going to flip the texture. I'm then going to put in, um, because I, I don't want the texture all over it, I just want it on the edges. So I'm going to select the mar electrical, elliptical marquee tool. I always get that one. I'm going to create a selection. Let's select the mask of that out. We're going to put a feather of 250. I generally find that is pretty good. Click OK, and then I'm going to put a mask on there and invert it, use Control I. Let's have a look at that, see what we got. Drop the opacity to 50%. Let's have a look at this texture. You know what? I don't think we need that one. Yep. Okay, I want to do last couple of adjustments to this. I'm going to increase the saturation. I got about plus 30. So this area looks nice, but the area here doesn't. So to combat that, I'm going to bring up a levels adjustment. I'm going to select the blue and I'm just going to push the blues up by about four just to reduce those blues that were down there. And now I've done that, um, I don't like the crop that we uh, decided on on second look. And this is a reason why you make sure that uh, delete cropped pixels is unticked so that later on we can come in and readjust the crop. And I prefer that crop instead. And last step, because we did adjust the crop, we just got to move this texture up like that. 
And there we go, I will now save this. And of course, don't forget to convert your color profile over to sRGB before you upload any of these type of images to Facebook. So there we go, that's our Orb of Life image done. I really like the texture we got going on the feather over here on the side. And the refraction we have inside of the orb is uh, pretty nice as well. There we go, that's how you can be very creative with macro photography. And by using different layers, you can select the individual components from each layer that you like and combine them into one image, such as the one we have here. There's no way I could have shot this image with, say, three or four flashes. I don't think it would come out quite as good because of all the, uh, the reflecting light and everything. There we go, that's that image done. I'm going to now save this out and upload it to my macro print um, website. You can view those in the description below if you wish to. But for now, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this two-part uh, video on creating the image Orb of Life. And I hope you've gained some knowledge, insight, or just enthusiasm to go out there and do some uh, creative macro photography. My name is Stuart Wood. I want to thank you for watching this video. Subscribe if you enjoyed it. Click the bell icon to get notified when new content goes live. And again, as always, I will see you on the next one.